Good afternoon. Welcome to the very first edition of the Coffee Break Catch-Up. My name is Mark Pendleton. I'm your Coffee Break host. Of course, I am the, the founder, the CEO of uh, Radio Lingua and all things Coffee Break Languages. And we are here with our very first edition of the Coffee Break Catch-Up, coming to you from Glasgow, where it is uh, half past three in the afternoon. I have no idea what the weather's like today because I haven't been outside. Um, but I think it's dry. I think it's mild. Uh, and I hope whatever, uh, wherever you are, the weather is good today. Now, it's half past three here in Glasgow. I would assume that means it's half past ten if you're watching in uh, New York in Eastern time. If you are uh, in, on the Pacific coast, then it will be half past seven in the morning. Wherever you are, uh, we hope that you're enjoying watching this Coffee Break catch-up coming to you live now. This will also be available after the event. So if you're watching afterwards, if you're watching the catch-up version of the catch-up, then of course you're very welcome too. Over the course of the next 15 minutes, we are going to be uh, talking about, first of all, coffee break languages, secondly about language learning in general, and then we also have some cultural information for you too. So this is a, an update on all things coffee break, all things languages, and all things cultural too. And we hope that you enjoy it. It's a new way of, of bringing you this news, and we really hope that it's useful to you. First things first, let us know who you are. Post a comment. Let us know if you're watching. Let us know uh, which language you're learning, and uh, we will be delighted to, to see that. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Give us a, a like or a love if you're enjoying it. And of course, if something goes wrong, then I'm sure you'll give it a laugh too. Now, uh, we have got an interesting talking point a little later, and we're talking about age and language learning, and we'll get to that in a, in a moment. But if you have got any thoughts on age and language learning, then feel free to post a comment, and you can join the discussion here. And, of course, after the, the, the video, you'll be able to join the discussion on our website. We've got some exciting coffee break news for you. Very exciting news indeed. We'll be telling you that in just a moment. And uh, we have got a, a talking point, as I said. We're going to be talking about uh, the whole idea of learning a language and whether age has a, a fact or to play, if it's got a part to play in learning a language. And then, as I said, we've got our cultural roundup, a roundup of all things cultural, uh, and that's going to be a little later in the show. Now, I am aware that there may be some slight problems, some slight technical problems. We are broadcasting at quite a high quality today, and I think what's happening is that that may be resulting in some buffering. The problem is we can't stop and start. Now that we've started the broadcast, we, have to, uh, we would have to start a completely new broadcast. So we're going to keep going. We will be recording this, and we will be making the, the video available afterwards uh, so that you can catch up with this afterwards. But let us begin, first of all, with our Coffee Break news. Okay, it's time for our Coffee Break news. Now, here at Coffee Break Languages, we've been very busy over the past uh, few weeks, few months. Um, we are, of course, as you probably know, if you're a Spanish learner, already running our En Marcha series, En Marcha con Coffee Break Spanish. Now, this is a series for intermediate to advanced learners, and uh, the En Marcha series is ongoing. We have just launched episode six last Friday, and episode seven will go out, not this Friday, but next Friday. So, uh, en Marcha is recorded in the, the south of Spain. We went over to the south of Spain and talked to lots of native speakers there. And in each episode, we're telling a different story, a different part of the, 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 the stories that are, are interesting from that part of the world. It might be about the cultural aspects there. It might be about the food. That's a great episode, the one about the food. Uh, it's about markets, about people's lives, people's way of life uh, in, in Malaga and the surrounding area. So that's in March, and that's ongoing. Likewise, ongoing is Coffee Break German to Go, which is our video series. And we've put a, a few episodes. I think there are three or four episodes of Coffee Break German to Go already available. And there are more coming very soon. And that's where our colleague Julia is on the streets of Berlin talking about uh, the German language, talking to German native speakers, and basically practicing, not her German, because she speaks fluently, obviously, but helping you practice your German. So Coffee Break German to Go is available on YouTube, and uh, of course that is also available at coffeebreaklanguages.com, where you'll see the episodes of Coffee Break German to Go. However, however, we do have some very exciting news for you today, because we've mentioned Spanish, we've mentioned German, but what we haven't mentioned so far is French and Italian. 
So let me tell you a little about what is coming with French and Italian because we are absolutely delighted to be announcing today that starting next week on Monday, we're going to be launching the brand new Coffee Break Italian magazine. And this is going to be joined the following week on Monday by the Coffee Break French magazine. Now, what is the Coffee Break Italian magazine and the Coffee Break French magazine? Well, these are brand new podcast series and we're going to be producing 20 minute audio episodes every week, sorry, every fortnight, so every two weeks, uh, alternating between Italian and French. So the first episode of Italian goes out on Monday the 6th of May, and then the second episode of Italian will go out on the 20th of May, and so on. So every two weeks uh, for Italian, and likewise with French, every two weeks starting for, from the 13th of May. Now in each episode, we're talking about 20-minute audio shows, uh, 20 minutes of, of French and, of course, English content, or Italian and English content, lots of discussion, lots of chat about the language, and we focus on a variety of things, from culture to grammar and, of course, idiomatic expressions. And over the course of the episodes, you'll be picking up lots and lots of new Italian uh, content and new Itali uh, French content, and you'll be developing your language skills at that intermediate to advanced level. Now, uh, if you are uh, if you're a, a learner, then the, if you're a learner of either French or, or Italian, then this is fantastic news for you, uh, because this means that you're going to be able to join your your colleagues on the the Coffee Break Italian and French teams that you know very well, and you'll be joining, for example, with the Italian. It will be once again me and Francesca, and we've already recorded a number of these episodes, and it's always great fun to to be recording it because uh, the the topics are so interesting. So the very first episode uh, has a segment, a, a cultural episode uh, on the Bocca della Verità, uh, the the mouth of truth. So if you've ever visited Rome, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. So that's a cultural element in there. There's also a question element. So this is where you as our listener, uh, you're able to ask us your questions. So we've already got some questions from listeners and we're going to be answering those questions on uh, the, the Coffee Break Italian magazine. And then in our final segment, we talk a little bit about something fun, maybe uh, an idiomatic expression or a proverb, or um, uh, there's some other ideas that we've got uh, that will fill in that last segment of the podcast. So as I said, 20 minutes, 20 minutes of audio, and I, I'm quoting here the, the Italian examples um, for French. Uh, I'm joined once again by Pierre Benoit. So Pierre Benoit, who uh, has been with us for season three and season four of Coffee Break French, and I'll be joined again by Pierre Benoit for season for this new season of the magazine. And uh, with, uh, in addition to Pierre Benoit, I'm also going to be joined by Susie, our new colleague in French. And uh, Susie is going to be helping us with the cultural texts and the end segment, the, the segment on uh, an idiomatic expression or something like that. So you can look forward to the Coffee Break Italian magazine and the Coffee Break Spanish, sorry, not the Coffee Break Spanish magazine, the Coffee Break French magazine starting uh, on the 6th and then the 13th of uh, March. And I've just realised on my calendar here on the wall, uh, if you're very eagle-eyed, you may already have seen this <laughs> this list of podcasts here. Um, I'm not taking any further because that would give the game away as to what else is coming later on. So we have these new uh, podcast series. The magazines are going to be 10 lessons per season, and uh, you can start listening to those magazines uh, from Monday the 6th of May. But that's not all, because with the, the magazines, obviously we'll be doing a podcast version, but there is, an, in addition to the podcast version, we're also going to have a, a premium version of the magazine. So the premium version in the Coffee Break Academy will have transcripts with lesson notes, so you'll be able to read the entire transcript of all the Italian or all the French in the episode, and then you'll be able to access vocabulary lists and a pack of exercises as well, which will give you the chance to practice the language that you're learning in each episode. So as of uh, next Monday, you'll be able to sign up for the the premium version of the Coffee Break Italian magazine, and then the following Monday, the Coffee Break French magazine will also be available, if that's the way you like to go. If you're simply happy with the audio, then as long as you're subscribed to the Coffee Break Italian or the Coffee Break French feed, then you will be able to access that audio uh, as you would expect. 
So that is our big news for Coffee Break Languages uh, today. And uh, we are really, really excited about launching these new shows and we are sure that you're going to love them. So let us know what you think in the comments if you're excited to hear that there's new Coffee Break French and Italian content coming soon. For now, let's move to our talking point. Let me see if I can bring in the correct little button here. We're going to move on to our talking point. Okay, so our talking point this week is all about at what age is it best to learn a language? And there have been studies that suggest particular ages or that even perhaps beyond a particular age, uh, it's not possible anymore to learn a language. And well, that's not something that I believe. We put together a little video here. So let's have a look at the video and this will give you some things to think about. And if you have any comments or thoughts about when you think the best age to learn a language is, then please post them in the comments. Perhaps you found it easier as a child to learn a language, or perhaps you've got a child or a grandchild who's currently learning a language. Perhaps if you are older, then you may find that it's, it's perhaps, well, for me, I feel it's not as easy as it once was to learn a language uh, because, you know, the grey cells don't quite do the, the job anymore, but that's not the case. Of course, it's not the case. So if you have any thoughts about this, please post your comments. It'll be really interesting to share some of your comments with the, the audience. And uh, if you have any thoughts, then just post them in the comments while we watch this video. Let's have a look at our video. Okay, so what do you think about the whole idea of learning a language at a particular age? Is that something that is, is difficult to do? Is it something that you feel that after a certain age it's no longer possible to learn a language? As the video suggests, sometimes it's a question of, of time and the time that you get to spend on a particular thing. With, with young people, perhaps, they're able to spend more time because what they do is go to school and therefore at school, they're able to learn and their brains are ready to learn. As adults, we are often very busy and we don't have the time to, to spend on particular things like uh, enjoyment activities, things that we are, we are involved in and hobbies and so on, or learning for whatever reason we're learning. So what do you think about this? Is it something that you are, uh, th that you feel strongly about? Do you feel that the idea of uh, learning a language is restricted to a particular age? Or is it something that you think can be done at any time? As, as Doreen, our coffee breaker said, uh, she feels that she was able to fit language learning into her day by using a resource such as Coffee Break. So what about you? Let's have a look at some of your responses. Um, We've got Carol here, and I think if I click on this button, you should be able to see, there we go, we've got Carol here, who's saying, in the response to this, the question regarding age and language learning, one can learn a new language at any age. It's much easier to learn a language prior to age three. However, one can learn a language at any age. It just takes a little more work. That may well be the case. It takes a little more work to get into the language, to understand the language, and to try and get everything to, 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 to do with the language and, and uh, use the, the, the skills that you have uh, to, to practice that language at that age. 
We've also got a message here from Barbara. Let's have a look at Barbara. Seeing my grandsons learn Spanish, English and German as toddlers has been amazing. With me as a 60 plus year old, I definitely have some memory challenges, but I keep trying. And I think that's it. I think it depends on, on the, the, the commitment and the motivation that you have. And very often seeing uh, younger people uh, learn languages very easily uh, can be almost discouraging. But it, of course, they can also give you your, your motivation, your your ideas, your uh, your, 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 your inspiration to, to learn the language. Okay, if you do have any further questions in that, or, or, or points that you'd like to, to raise, then please do post them and we will have uh, a little look at them later. But for now, what we're going to do is move on to our cultural roundup of the week. So let's do some cultural roundup and find out what's happening this weekend in various places around the world where you could be practicing your language skills. Okay, so it is time for our cultural roundup. Let me see if I can bring in this slide. There we go. So let's see what is happening. First of all, we have chosen a French uh, event that's happening between the 3rd and 5th of May, so this weekend. And it's Les Grands Jeux Romains. Les Grands Jeux Romains, which is happening in the town of Nîmes in uh, the south of France. It's kind of halfway between Marseille and Montpellier. And there is a very famous arena in the town of uh, Nîmes. And there, in this arena, they hold, this weekend, uh, basically chariot races and uh, gladiators. It's the Roman Games, the great Roman Games. And this year, there's something new in the, the event. They have recreated a, a, a Roman encampment. Uh, and that way, you can get to experience what that involves uh, firsthand, if you can manage to get to Nîmes this weekend. Now, these cultural uh, pieces of information that we're sharing here, we'll also be writing out tomorrow to everyone with all the links that you need uh, to find out more about uh, what we've covered in this. So we'll send you a, an article about the, the Grand Jeu Romain, and it will be in French, so that will give you some reading practice if you're learning French. But obviously, we also have some other information here because we have also got uh, some events happening elsewhere. So we've got in Spain this weekend, or starting on, on Monday actually, um, it's the Fiesta de los Patios de Córdoba. Now, there is something coming up, I believe, on the Facebook page um, about uh, the Patios de, de Córdoba tomorrow. But this is a fantastic festival because um, it's at the start of special festivities throughout the month of May in the, this beautiful city of Córdoba. And Córdoba has a, a special place in our hearts because we actually recorded some materials in, in Córdoba for En Marcha. We were all there, in fact, almost... Uh, was that a year ago? No, that was about 18 months ago now. We were there in, in Cordoba. We were in Madrid this day last year. Um, but we, in fact, no, we weren't. We were in Salamanca last, last year in this day. But uh, in, in Cordoba, there are uh, patios in the middle of houses. So they tended not to have gardens because of the very dry climate. They would have patios in the middle, a central area in the house. And uh, there they would uh, grow plants and, and have fountains and so on to help keep the house that bit cooler. So in May, there is this festival when everyone decorates their patio and they put flowers everywhere and it's absolutely beautiful. So it's definitely worth uh, checking out if you happen to be able to get to Cordoba uh, next week. What else is coming up? Well, let's move. Uh, we were uh, in, in Cordoba, where our colleague Marina is from. We're now moving to another part of the world where our colleague Julia is from, and that's near Potsdam in Germany with the Baumblütenfest. And that's already started. It started uh, at the beginning of the week and it goes on until Sunday. And the Baumblütenfest is, uh, well, let's, let's break it up. Blüte is blossom. And Baum is tree, so it's the Tree Blossom Festival. And this is actually a fruit wine festival. And it's in its 140th year, um, and this is where you would go if you fancy tasting some fruit wine in, uh, in Germany. So normally it's springtime, so the, it's the, the one that starts spring, and, and basically if you want to, to enjoy some fruit wine and try some uh, different types of wine, you can do wine tasting, or you can enjoy Kaffer Kuchen uh, on the, the, the banks of the river and in the gardens. Um, or indeed, you can also try bungee jumping if that's the kind of thing that you prefer. And that's all at the Baumblütenfest in uh, Werder uh, near Potsdam. And again, we'll be sending you a link about this so that you can check that out. 
So one final uh, cultural thing that's happening this week, and that is uh, in uh, Italy. We're heading to the Veneto now, the Veneto in the northeast of Italy, and this is in a town called Rovigo. Rovigo, and this festival is called Rovigo Racconta. Now, raccontare is the verb that's used to tell a story. And it's the festival which inaugurates spring in this part of Italy, and it allows you to travel through the world of ideas and stories through books and music. It's seen as one of the 25 most important cultural festivals in the whole of Italy, and that is happening this weekend. So if you happen to be there this weekend, you can go and enjoy some of the open-air readings uh, of the, 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 the books and in Indeed, of course, with the, the music too. So that's your cultural roundup for this week. Again, we will be sending out some links, links to articles in the foreign language, uh, which will help you practice your reading skills, and we'll be sending those links out tomorrow. Now, if you have not yet signed up to our Coffee Break newsletter, then you can do so. You need to go to radiolingua.com slash newsletter, or newsletters. I'll double check that and we'll put it in the comments. Radiolingua.com slash newsletter. I think. And there you can sign up to our Coffee Break Catch-Up newsletter. And that means we'll be sending you all the links. If you're already subscribed to our, our French, German, Spanish, Italian newsletter, you'll get this anyway. Um, but if you're not yet subscribed, then make sure you do. And we'll send you out the links with uh, the links to our own content, so our new announcements and so on. Um, our links to a new article that we just pushed on, uh, that we would just put on the site today, all about uh, language learning at particular ages. And also these cultural links. Okay, uh, let me see. Have we got any further comments here uh, about age and language learning? Let's see what we have in the comments. We've got one more thing to do. Don't go away because we've got to talk about these these mugs. Um, I'll be talking about that in just a minute because we're going to be announcing the winners of our postcard competition. Um, but let's have a quick look at uh, the comments. We've got a few hellos. Um, we've got, uh, let me see, we've got hellos from Kenneth. Uh, and we've got Gina, ciao Gina, um, uh, Ings is saying buongiorno as well, uh, we've got uh, Diane, Diane qui apprend le français, uh, j'apprends français ou j'apprends le français, les deux, les deux, ça va, j'apprends français, j'apprends le français en fait, je parle français, je parle le français, you can use both there, but if you're saying j'apprends, it sounds better to say j'apprends le français, voilà, I hope that helps uh, Diane. Uh, we've got Guaor, uh, we've got Maybelline, who is watching from work. I hope that's okay. I hope you're allowed to do that. We've got Gabrielle, who's saying uh, ni hao, uh, ni hao. Um, we uh, have also Carissa, who's listening to Coffee Break French. Um, Barbara thinks the idea for the catch-up is a buona idea. Um, and uh, Carol's asking about Coffee Break Italian Season 3. Well, the, the Coffee Break Italian magazine will certainly... Uh, provide lots of information and lots of new learning for you um, in a similar style to Coffee Break Italian Season 2. So it's not a full 40 lesson Season 3 that you're uh, going to be experiencing from Monday, but I'm sure, Carol, that you will enjoy it. Um, let's see who else we've got. We've got Diego from Guatemala. Hola, Diego, ¿cómo estás? Uh, we've got Carlos. Uh, uh, tra, sto imparando tante cose. You're enjoying, you're learning so many things. Uh, we've got Kathy who's enjoying Coffee Break Spanish and Abdul who is watching us too. Barbara's got a comment here with all these features for each language, the academy seems to provide the equivalent of a university course, the likes of which I've not been able to find in a rural setting of Idaho. Grazie mille. Uh, thanks to you, Barbara, for, for your, your comment there and indeed for all your enthusiasm. Okay, it is time now to announce our winners. Now, we had sent uh, put out information on, on Facebook and on uh, Instagram and so on all about these new Coffee Break mugs that we've got. This is Coffee Break Spanish one. We've also, also got Coffee Break mugs for our other languages too. And we asked you to send in uh, some postcards. And I've just realized I forgot to take a photo of our wall in the other office where we've got all the postcards up. But we'll take a photo of that and we'll put that uh, on uh, Facebook very soon and indeed on Instagram. But we have received lots and lots of postcards and, and letters and, and information from you. It's been lovely to read all these postcards. We've read every single one. And today we would like to announce the winners of our uh, April competition because there will be more uh, mugs given away at the end of uh, 
at the end of May. I forgot what, what month this is now. And our winners for April are uh, Malin Lauschus from Sweden. And uh, we have Judy from Stockton. So congratulations to Malin and to Judy, who will be receiving their very own coffee break. Uh, I think French in the case of Judy and Italian in the case of Malin uh, very, very soon. So you'll be see, receiving a, a, a mug very soon and we hope that you enjoy uh, enjoying your coffee or your tea or whatever you like to drink uh, in your coffee break mug. If you would like to be in with the chance of winning a, a coffee break mug, then all you need to do is send us a postcard. And you can send that to our address. And I think I can put that on the screen. Yeah, I can indeed. So our address is 100 West George Street, Glasgow, G21PP. And that is, in, of course, the United Kingdom. Okay, that is where we're going to leave this episode of the Coffee Break Catch-Up. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. We will be writing out tomorrow with all the links from today's email. We'll be posting a, a recording of this also on the website. And I very much hope, although it's been a little bit jumpy uh, on the live, that the recording has recorded smoothly. And if that's the case, then we'll be putting that up on the website and uh, you'll be able to watch back there. Or indeed, you can continue to comment here on Facebook if you prefer. That's it for this edition of the Coffee Break Catch-Up. Thanks to the team behind the scenes who have been helping me get it ready for this today. Um, and I think that is where we're going to leave it. Thank you very much indeed. Merci beaucoup. Vielen Dank. That's a big Greek one for you. Thanks so much. Uh, grazie molte. Muchas gracias. Vielen Dank. I think I've said that already. It's time to go. Thank you.